good morning and welcome to the online service. Our church is open again and our services continue at 11 a.m. each Sunday. During the summer, the church gathering team have been preparing our halls to enable our organisations to restart in September. In line with government and church regulations, our lower hall can accommodate 48, our upper hall 60, our upper committee room 18, number one nine, and our lower committee room is now a designated isolation room. Each organisation has submitted detailed risk assessment forms for their organisations and these have been passed by the church gathering team and by church session. So, Monday 20th of September, Tots and Company have restarted and they will be in the lower hall from 10 to 12. The bowling club is meeting again on Monday from 7pm. There will be a committee meeting at half past seven in the upper committee room. Tuesday 21st of September, coffee at number one from 10 o'clock. GB, juniors, seniors and brigaders will be meeting at 6.30pm outdoors. Wednesday the 22nd of September, our Friendship Club will meet in the lower hall at 2.30pm. Thursday 23rd of September is choir practice at 7.30pm. Saturday morning at 9am is our prayer meeting. Sunday the 19th of September, Unite will meet at 7pm in the lower hall. Care and Share. Food for Care and Share can be brought to church on Sundays we have decided to stop the Thursday between 11 and 12 now that our church is open again. Next Sunday, the 26th of September, the Reverend Richard Graham will be conducting our worship in church, online and via telephone. And finally, our church car park will be closed on Tuesday the 21st and Tuesday the 28th of September to facilitate our Girls Brigade and will reopen on the mornings of Wednesday the 22nd and Wednesday the 29th of September. After over a year of uncertainty, we are delighted to announce that 2nd Carrot Fergus Boys Brigade will once again be back in the hall this session. We will be starting back on Wednesday the 29th of September at 6.30pm for all P1 to P4 boys and at 7.30pm for all boys from P5 to 18 years of age. Over the next week, we will be making our registration documents available online via our Facebook page. If possible, I would appreciate it if you could complete the form when it's available and return it to us before the 29th of September. God willing, we look forward to seeing all boys, both old and new, on the 29th. Thank you. These are all the announcements. Good morning and welcome to our pre-recorded online and telephone service for the 19th of September 2021 from Joy Mind Presbyterian. You're very welcome to join us and hope you'll find fellowship with us. With sadness, I have to announce the death in our congregation. Mr. Robert Wilson has passed away and may we continue to, to remember uh, the family in our prayers. In Psalm 91 we read, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Let us praise God now with our opening hymn, the hymn number 211, I will sing the wondrous story.
Let us now bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we are here to worship you and we are here to open our hearts and we are also here to express our thanksgiving to you and to say that you are our refuge and our fortress and you are the only one whom we trust. So Lord, we pray that you'd use this hour of our lives to, for us to be filled with your glory and with your uh, teaching. And Lord, we also pray that you'd make us to open our hearts and to lower our heads before you and to confess that often we have forgotten that we are yours. Many times we carry on our lives in a way that there's no God for us. Sometimes we just forget to witness to you. So Lord, forgive us whenever we have these feelings and these thoughts and give us strength, strength to throw all these thoughts away from our hearts and our minds. And remind us, Lord, that of who you really are and how much you love us and how much you care for us. So, Lord, hear us as we want to forget, want to confess all of our wrongdoings and all of our sins to you. Hear us, Lord, and forgive us in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading for today is taken from the book of Judges, and we will be reading chapter 6, verses 1 to 16. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the other eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to kind them to their or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian was so impoverished, uh, uh, the Israelites, that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the land of the Egyptians and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in those land you live, but you have not listened to me. And the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash, the Abazarite, where his son Gideon was thrashing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our ancestors told us? about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? 
But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the land of Midian. The Lord, Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. And the Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. This is where our reading ends. May God bless his word to us. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Hope you are doing good. Hope you're all well. And uh, hope you know and hope you're all aware that uh, we have restarted Sunday school and also a couple of our organizations as well. So just keep our church Facebook page uh, for the announcements and hope you'll see you back soon. But before that, today I would love to talk to you about fruits and a particular fruit that I love. And I'm so thankful to God that created this type of fruit to us. And that fruit is, I would say, one of the best fruits we can have. And it is a banana. See, bananas are awesome. Because bananas are not only just yummy, they're so delicious. And not only that you can make so many nice things, nice food, sweets out of bananas. You can put a banana in your pocket or in your rucksack. So if you're going to school, if you're going for a walk or going for a trip, it would provide you with a lot of energy, vitamins, and fuel and sugar and everything you need for that trip. So bananas are awesome. It's a bit of an all-in-one food. And also you can make a lot of nice food out of bananas. I'm sure you love the banana milkshakes or how about the banana bread or how about, um, don't know, cannot really think about anything, but I'm sure you can think about other nice stuff, what we can make of bananas, but, oh yes, banana cream pies, those are awesome, right? So, but there is a problem with a banana. Let's see that I'm really hungry now, so I'm going to eat and have a bite. Excuse me, I'm really hungry, I had no breakfast. Ho. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. This is really delicious. But, but you see, the problem is that, yeah, excuse me for eating during a service. I know it's not a nice thing to do, but yeah, just excuse me. So, if I want to eat this banana later, after we finish the recording or after my lunch or whenever, see, I cannot really close it because if I just leave it like that and if I won't eat it now, it will just all start to go brown and it will just ripen too fast and it just won't be nice to eat. So what shall we do? How shall we close off the bananas? Well. God didn't make the bananas in a way that, well, I'm just going to open it up and eat a few bites and just close it and then eat it up later on, right? So how should we do it? So I brought a few things here. So if I will use maybe a paper clip, so can I just maybe close the banana with a paper clip? Let's see. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? No, not really, because there's a bit of a hole in here. So no, a paper clip is not good for closing off a banana and keep it for later. I've got another awesome thing here. 
Super glue. Can we put a bit of a super glue here? Maybe I know this is harmful, so don't do this at home. So if we just put a bit at the edge here, right? Not to touch the actual fruit. So just see at the very edge edges. So can we stick it together? No. Nah, that's impossible that super glue wasn't a good idea. And just be very careful when you're using super glue because you don't want to end up sticking some stuff onto your fingers and just walk like that all day, right? How about this? How about a bit of a sticky tape? So let's just try to close my banana with a bit of a sticky tape here. And, uh, let's see. Need to seal it up really well. Oh. So let's see. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, that's maybe sticky tape would do the job, but well, you know what? The problem is that it's so well sealed that I cannot really open it. So, you know what? After all, if you open a banana, you have to eat it. You cannot really keep it for later because you cannot close it. See, we've tried. A couple of methods here, but none of them are working and you definitely don't put super glue on food because it's harmful, it's poisonous, so don't ever do it. No, it wasn't a good idea. But you know what, my little friends, this just gave me an idea that sometimes we might have the same thought with our Christian life. See, once a banana is opened, you just have to eat it or share it with somebody. And it's the same thing when I, in life. Whenever we just say something not nice to somebody, especially when you say to somebody whom you like that, oh, I hate you, or you're just making me so angry or something like that. And once we said it, well, we've said it, we cannot undo it, we cannot close it off, we cannot just make things that, oh, nothing happened. So how can we undo it or what can we do about it? Well, in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 31, verse 34, we read that God says that I will forgive them for the wicked things they did. I will not remember their sins anymore. So this little verse is telling us here that God knows what we have done wrong whenever we've done something wrong. And God is the only one who's able to take all of our sins and wrongdoings back. So he's able to forgive us. That's why Jesus came that if we trust, if we believe in him, our sins are forgiven and we are able to start a new life with him. So, see, it, it's very silly to open a banana and not to eat it and just trying to close it. And it's really silly to fix our wrongdoings and to fix our sins. God is the only one who's able to forgive us. God is the only one who's able to fix us. We cannot fix a banana using these methods. No, that's impossible. And we cannot fix our own sins, but God is able to do that. So let us now pray, and then we will sing a wee hymn. So let us pray first. Heavenly Father, we pray that you're able to forgive us, and Lord, every time we said something wrong or we thought something wrong or we hurt people who we know, our families or our friends, Lord, help us to know that you're the only one who's able to forgive us. And may we ask also for your forgiveness. 
Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let us sing now hymn number 452, King of Kings, Majesty. Let us now bow again our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to see all the bright things around us and all the good things in our lives. And Lord, open our eyes to see the things to be thankful for and help us to see the things, all the gifts that you have given to us. And Lord, may we continue to see all your wonderful gifts that comes out of your grace. And may we use these gifts to bless others. So Lord, lead us where somebody needs our help, our advice or our support. And may we continue to support the work of your church. Lord God, we pray that you would continue to bless all the cheerful givers. Lord, we bring before you uh, the Wilson family as they are facing difficult times as they lost their loved ones. Loved one, Lord, be very near to them and surround them. And Lord, we pray the same for all those who are still facing the hard thoughts of bereavement. Lord, may they feel your spirit and may you lift them up high lord we pray for our next week be with everything what we'll be doing and may that everything what we'll be doing will fit according to your plans and according to your will so lord be with us bless us and continue to love us in jesus name we pray Amen. One day in Sunday school, the theme was about Gideon. And the following Sunday, just to do a bit of a recap, the teacher asked the children if they remember that what was it all about last week. But no hands went up. Okay, the teacher said, I'll give you a little clue. He fought the battle using only lambs, uh, pitchers and trumpets. Still no response from the children. Maybe you remember not how he used a fleece to learn about God's will. Still no one remembered. Well, here's your final clue, the teacher said. There are people today with the same name 
as our hero who go around the hotels and putting Bibles in the rooms. Finally, one child said, oh, I know, it was Hilton. Yeah, so if you've been in a hotel, I'm sure you have seen the little Bibles placed in the drawers by the Gideons. A really amazing group of Christians who devoted themselves to share the good news, the Bible, in, in many places. For instance, in hotels. I remember when I worked in a nursing home, the Gideons approached us and, and were able to leave a Bible in every single room. Why would people dedicate their lives uh, to spread the words and to name to, or to have their names after these biblical characters? I think because Gideon was such a person full of faith and as we look at all his life, he was really worth that now these group of Christians to have uh, this name that the, the Gideonites. The book of Judges speaks about a very interesting time of the history of Israel. Well, at that time, there's no king. So it means that, well, I wouldn't say that everyone was doing whatever they wanted to do. I would rather say that everyone was doing what it seemed right in their eyes. So as a result, the nation of Israel went into circles. They worshipped God, but then something happened. So they turned away from God. They started to worship other idols and God. So as a result of their sins, God punished them. And who was the best punishment? So God allowed the surrounding nations to attack them. So as a result of that, the Israelites realized what they have done. So they tried to, they started to cry out to God for forgiveness and for repentance. So God heard their cry and their prayers and God sent a prophet or a leader to them to deliver them. And it happened and it happened and it happened many, many times. And during one of these times when the Midianites became strong and it, it had, it, they attacked the Israelites, God calls Gideon to be their deliverer and their leader. So we can say that Gideon was the right person to do that. Sometimes you might feel that, well, yeah, I might be the right person to do something that God is calling me to do. And I'm ready. I don't need to pray more or study more or just, I'm just ready to serve God. But there are times whenever we might do this in a wrong way. Just like in the story of a barber who thought that he's desperate to share his faith with his customers. So the next morning he decided that once he will see the first customer walking into his barber shop. Today I'm going to witness to the first person who walks into my door. So soon after he had opened his shop, first man came in and said, Good morning, I would love a shave. So the barber said, Oh yes, sure, just sit, sit in, take a seat and I will be with you in a moment. So the barber went in the back of his shop for a very short prayer. And I asked, God, the first customer just came in and I'm going to tell him about going to heaven. So, Lord, give me the wisdom and tell me the words how to tell this person that he needs to go to heaven. Amen. So quickly the barber came out with his razor knife in one hand and in his Bible in the other hand and looked straight into the eyes of the man who was sitting in the chair and said, Good morning, sir. I have a question for you. Are you ready to die? So probably this is not the best way to share our faith with somebody because this question might and the way 
this person in this little story asked might just scare somebody away from God. But let's just look at a very good example of how somebody was brave to share his faith. So let's just look at briefly uh, today at the story and the life of Gideon, especially at his calling as we read. So here's a perfect biblical character who fits in the description that yes, he was a great warrior and a faithful person. But also I feel like that he was just one of us. He wasn't perfect, he wasn't a warrior, but God made him to be great. He was even struggling a bit. He had no idea that he will lead only 300 soldiers to fight against the Midianites in a battle. And they, they will win only with 300 people. But you see, how great is God that he is able to use ordinary people with ordinary skills. And when you are willing to do something for God, for, for his church, for his people, he is able to encourage you so well. Gideon, probably he didn't have special powers or special knowledge how to be a good soldier, how to fight. I'm not into the army, but I'm sure if you want to be a good and a professional soldier, you have to train and you have to learn a lot. And you have to see that might take a good number of years, not just in Gideon's story that it will be you and you just go. But you see, that's a different when God is calling us to do something. God sees the potential in us. God even sees that even whenever we think that, oh no, that's, it's, it's not for me. I, it, it will be impossible, God. So that's choose somebody else. No, 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 no. But God has faith in us. God knows us. God knows our abilities. And also God knows that how he can teach us and how we'll be able to achieve uh, our cause. So the Midianites have taken over Israel. The Israelites are so afraid of them that whenever they saw them approach and they immediately started to hide in caves somewhere in the hills and they tried to hide all the food and everything what they had because the Midianites would have stolen everything and just kill all the animals and destroy all the crops. But shall we say that luckily they had Gideon? And as I said, that he was leading only 300 soldiers to conquer the whole army of the Midianites. But really was he? Or how can we, we say that he was the perfect person for his job? Because as we read in verse 11, at his calling that the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah and that belonged to jo Joash the Abizarite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. He was a farmer so he wasn't uh, coming from maybe a, a, a famous family who was famous for, for fighting so he wasn't a famous soldier, he, he was a far, farmer, he had farming background. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. See, God knew everything about Gideon and God knew that despite of his background, he had awesome abilities and God made him, God taught him. So the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. This is how uh, the angel calls him. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? 
but now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Miriam. So God is sending this highly qualified warrior to defeat this army. Well, at that time, was he qualified to lead an army? Well, I think the Bible is not really mentioning that, but it's all God. God made him to be ready. And Gideon's response is that, But Lord Gideon, as how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. Gideon thinks about himself that, God, no, 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 it, I won't be the best person for this job. I'm very low in self-esteem or God why would you pick me I'm just ordinary so Lord pick somebody else we both know that I'm not the right person for this job but aren't we the same uh, as Gideon at this stage many times whenever God is maybe calling us to do something or maybe when God is calling us to lead or maybe when God is encouraging us to to maybe just to do something more uh, for his church. Verse 16, the Lord answered, I will be with you and you will stride down all the Midianites together. Just an average person will accomplish such a great thing. Why? Simply because God made him to do it. Everywhere in the Bible, when we read about how the ordinary people done awesome things for God, just think about the disciples. They weren't uh, teachers or faithful people. They were just fishermen and, and sinful tax collectors, and so on and so on. Or Moses, he couldn't speak in front of people. Theologians say that he must have been some sort of difficulty in speaking. And he wasn't, he was called not only just to speak in front of a few people, but instead of the Pharaoh. So God made him to do, or think about Jonah, he ran away from God. But then God made him to accomplish uh, his calling. Or think about Apostle Paul how horrible things he has done before he met Jesus. And then all the great things he started to do for God and for his church. Or King David, he wasn't born as a king. He was born as a shepherd. So just think about from a shepherd being the king of Israel. It's with God. God made him. They all weren't great characters, but they were just normal people. But they became great because God made them to be great. So friends, if God wants to use you, and even though you think that, oh, I'm not a good speaker, I'm not charismatic, or I'm not smart, or I'm not whatever, whatever, whatever. Just think about the way how God is looking at you and not the way as looking at yourself. Oh, Gideon and many biblical characters had their own excuses, but God knew that what they will be able to accomplish. So, should I say that when God is calling us, we don't have a lot of excuses to make? Doesn't matter how young or how old or who you are. God knows you and God wants to encourage you. It just has to be you. I remember, let me just finish with this quote that somebody put it, that somebody said that the people that do great things for God aren't great people at the start, but they are great after they finish. So just think about this. Let us thought. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks that you are able to encourage us. And Lord, you know us so well, even better than as we know ourselves. 
Lord, we give you thanks that you knew the potential in Gideon and so many other biblical characters, and you know the potential in us as well. So, Lord, help us to be faithful to you and help us to serve you and to dedicate our lives to you. Lord, encourage us every day because we need your encouragement and we need your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is praise number three, Lord of all hopefulness. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.